Problem 1. Greater levels of ethnic diversity leads to lower average happiness. This is a map of ethnic diversity around the world, and this map is a global projection of subjective well-being. Here is a list of the 20 happiest nations presented in the survey. The U.S., which prides itself on diversity, is not listed among the top 20. Incidentally, the happiest nations tend to be overwhelmingly homogeneous, while the least happy nations tend to be overwhelmingly diverse. While there are many variables contributing to overall well-being, it is immediately evident that greater ethnic diversity is negatively correlated with national happiness. The map of world happiness is reflective of this phenomenon. The Quality of Human Conditions Index focuses on the relationship between national IQ and the quality of human conditions. The authors report these to be strongly correlated. These results closely correspond to the UN's Quality of Life portion of the Human Development Index of 2010. Problem 2. Diversity leads to less social trust. Additionally, there is Putnam's survey of 41 communities across the U.S., in which he found that in more diverse areas, respondents reported less happiness and lower perceived quality of life. Figures 3 and 4 are directly comparative, showing a strong positive correlation between interracial trust and ethnic homogeneity, and a strong negative correlation between interracial trust and ethnic heterogeneity. Figures 5 and 6 indicate that in more diverse settings, Americans distrust not only people who do not look like them, but even people who do. These findings reveal that diversity triggers both in-group and out-group division, as well as social isolation. Problem 3. Diversity results in higher crime rates. Let's look at the racial breakdown of crime in the U.S. These surveys look at the race of perpetrators and victims of violent crimes and other factors based on race. The major findings of these studies reveal that certain racial groups are more likely than others to commit violent and racially based hate crimes. Therefore, a good indicator of an area's crime rate is its ethnic and racial composition. Additionally, a population breakdown of the U.S. reveals the same pattern. With population density controlled for, we see that crime rates are higher in more diverse regions. Problem 4. More diverse countries tend to do poorly economically. This map reflects per capita GDP figures for 2008. The map defines production based on geographical location. Here we see comparisons of national wealth made on the basis of nominal GDP. Countries are ranked by industrial production growth rate. The following tables show the relationship between countries' index scores and aggregate IQ scores. The research found that national IQ correlates strongly with per capita income and rates of economic development. Because average IQ varies by geographical location, importing people of lower IQ nations and increasing ethnic diversity in a country will have a negative impact on its economy. Thus, ethnic diversity appears to be negatively correlated with economic growth. We can expect countries with the greatest amount of ethnic diversity to experience less economic growth and more struggle. And this is what we see. Countries that have remained relatively homogeneous tend to have stronger, healthier economies. We also know that certain racial groups are generally more likely to use welfare, which imposes a burden on everyone else and creates a dependency. Let's look at the breakdown of welfare use by ethnic group. We look at the population as a whole and the total population of each respective race within that whole. For example, we see that whites are more than 50% of the population, yet represent less than their overall population, while blacks make up around 14% of the population, yet comprise 40% of the total number of welfare recipients. They are overrepresented at about 2.5 times their actual population. Problem 5. Diversity leads to conflict. In his study of group conflict, Professor Van Hannen's index shows the following results on the relationship between ethnic heterogeneity and ethnic conflict. The study confirmed to a large extent the theory that countries with greater levels of ethnic diversity will experience significant ethnic conflict. His index of ethnic heterogeneity is strongly correlated with the index of ethnic conflict. In the book Politics in a Changing World, the author compares interstate wars and internal conflicts for a given period and concludes that two-thirds of the conflicts he examined included an ethnic component, and also that ethnic conflicts are four times more likely to occur than interstate wars. There is also the issue of identity politics and to what extent national politics is an ethnic struggle. People tend to vote along racial lines, thus dividing a country along racial lines. Minorities tend to vote in favor of policies that benefit them. And so we have sufficient empirical evidence to confirm our hypothesis that increasing ethnic diversity in a country will have an overall negative impact on that country. We can conclude that in all societies where significant ethnic divisions exist, they lead to conflict. More diverse countries suffer from an array of tensions. Diversity is a destructive force.